Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Thank you for joining us this morning. Welcome to Beit Lehem Messianic Congregation. Let us prepare our hearts to worship the King. Please silence your cell phones. Let us rise before the blessing, before the sound of the shofar. Shabbat Shalom, everybody. This is a blessing of the shofar. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Kedishanu V'mitzvotav V'tzivanu Neshmo Ko Shofar Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who sanctifies us with his commandments and commands us to hear the voice of the shofar. Join me in prayer. Avinu Malkenu, our Father, our King. Abba, we come before you this Shabbat with humble hearts to lift your name on high, to join together with one voice in praise and worship, because your loving kindness is better than life. We thank you for your mercy and grace that leads us near to you. We ask for your healing hand upon our congregation. If anyone is sick, if anyone is going through a trial, if anyone is struggling, that your goodness would surround them and your right hand would lead them by the springs of water. Abba, we thank you in all things and we wait for you like we wait for the morning. In the name of Messiah Yeshua, Amen. Amen. I mean, thank you, Robin. Thank you, Bianca, for sounding the, show, the sound of the shofar. And today we, we are in the presence of our God. And so please join me as we're standing on page 79 and 80 for Aleinu. It is our duty. Let me remind you that when you hear the word and we bow and bend the knee, that's how we do it. That's, this is a very old biblical form of worship. And so we begin with... Aleinu. Aleinu leshak be'ak la dohon hakol La tegel la le yotze bereshit Shelo ashanu kachayir haratzon Belo samanu ki mishpachot hadamam Shelo sham kalchenu kachem Begor aleinu ki choch hamona Banachnu korim, umishtachabim humodim, livlei melech malkecham lakim, akadosh baruchu. Shaunote shamayim be yotzet haaretz Umoshav yokar o bachmayim imaha Ushninat utso, ushninat utso Bechai vei meromim U eloeinu eheinon Hemed malkeinu efezulato Kakatu vetorato, beyadar hayom, beyadar hayom, beyashavo, ta elebeham. Ki adonai uha elohim, basha hamayim mima, beyal haretz, beyal haretz. And together we say, It is our duty to praise the Master of all, to ascribe greatness to the author of creation. For he made us unlike the nations of the lands, and he has not placed us like the families of the earth. He has not made our portion like theirs, and our lot like all the multitudes. And we bend the knee and bow, and acknowledge our thanks before the King of our kings, the Holy One, blessed be He. He stretches out heaven and establishes earth's foundation, and the seat of His glory is in the heavens above. 
in the presence of his power is the most exalted heights. He is our God, there is none other. True is our King, there is nothing beside him. As it is written in his Torah, and you shall know this day and take to your heart that the Lord, he is God in the heavens above and on the earth below, there is none other. And at the bottom of the page with the Bnei Hamar. Benehemar, Behaya Haronai, Lamelech al Kohaharetz, Bayom Hahu, Bayom Hahu, Ie Adonai Echad, Ushemo, Ushemo. And together we say, and it is said, the Lord shall be king over all the world. On that day, the Lord will be one and his name one. Amen. Baruch Hashem, please join with me on page 57 and 58 for the Kedusha. This is the Kedusha prayer was instituted by the men of the great assembly early second temple times. And it deals with the holiness of God and contains several scriptures from the books of the prophets. This is a reader response. This is the sanctification prayer. We will sanctify your name in this world, even as, as it is sanctified in the heavens above, as it is written by your prophet. And they call to each other, saying, Those facing them say, Blessed! Together, from your heavenly abode, you will appear, O our King, and reign over us, for we wait for you. When will you reign in Zion? Soon, even in our days. May you dwell there forever and ever. May you be exalted and sanctified within Jerusalem, your city, from generation to generation and for all eternity. May our eyes see your kingdom as it is expressed in the songs of your might by the hand of David, your righteous anointed. The Lord shall reign forever, your God of Zion, from generation to generation. Hallelujah! Amen. As we're standing, please join us as we praise the Lord for He is good. And this is the day of the Lord. We are going to praise His holy name.
upon him the spirit of wisdom and truth. portion of the day. Join me on page 43 and 44 for the Barhu. The Barhu is the first and foremost blessing in the morning service. With this Barha, this blessing, we bless the Lord and we recognize His glory, His majesty, and let me remind you that this is a reader response. When you hear the word Barhu, we bow our head. You hear the word Et Adonai, we straighten up. And once again, this is a very, very old biblical form of worship. And so this is a reader response. And allow me to get my... Bar who et Aronai Hame Borah Bless the Lord, the Blessed One. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. But the seven days, the Sabbath of the Lord your God, in it you shall not do any work. Speak also unto the children of Israel, saying above all, my Sabbaths you shall keep. For it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations that you may know that I am the Lord who sanctifies you. Amen. Today, since this is the fourth Sabbath of the month, we have the honor of having our, uh, some of our sisters to be 
doing some liturgical portions. So we welcome our sister Karen Penarubia, who's going to be leading us with the Beis Shamru and the Blessing of Messiah, followed with the Shema and Behafta by our sister Glendy. Shabbat Shalom family, please join me on page 46 of your Sido, the Vishamru. Vishamru, Bene Israel. in English. The children of Israel shall keep the Shabbat of serving it throughout their generation as an everlasting covenant. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another, and from one Shabbat to another, all flesh shall come to worship before me, says the Lord. Amen. Amen. And join me in the blessing of the Messiah. That's on also page 46 of your Siddur. Baruch Atta Adonai, Eloheinu Melech Haolam, Asher Nathan Lanu Ederek Ha Yeshua, Bimashia Yeshua. Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has given us the way of salvation in Messiah Yeshua. 
Amen. And please join us, Sister Glendy, who will lead us in the Shema. Amen. Shabbat Shalom. So in pages 47 and 48, in the Shema, we join together in proclaiming the two greatest commandments as taught by Yeshua, to love God with all our heart, soul, and strength, and to love our neighbor as ourselves. We also see that God wants us to love him and not just obey him because he is almighty. So, we've, uh, so please join me in facing east. Um, as Jerusalem is in the east, and we know that when Messiah returns, he will be ruling and reigning from Jerusalem. Shema Israel Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Baruch Shem The Lord is our God, the Lord is one. Blessed is the name of his glorious kingdom for all eternity. Amen. And we return to our places and we continue with the Be'ahavta. Be'ahavta et Adonai Elohecha Bejo Lebaja Ubejo Nafshecha Ubehol me odeja, beja yum ha de barim ha ele, akshera no himet safha, ha yom aleva veja, beshinartam levaneja bedivartavam, beshifteja bebeiteja. Ubeleftecha baderek, ubeshaftecha ubehumecha, ugshartam leor al yodecha, beha yula tufafor beinenecha, ugtaftam al mesusor beitecha. In English, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. And have these words which I command you this day be upon your heart, and you shall teach them diligently to your children, and speak of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you retire, and when you arise. And you shall bind them for a sign upon your hand, and let them be frontless between your eyes. And you shall write them on the doorpost of your house and upon your gates. In the Be'ahavta, Be'ahavta la reja kamoja, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Amen, amen. So let us continue with the Torah blessings. Thank you, Glendy. Thank you, Karen Penarubia. That was a blessing. Please join me on page 65 and 66 for the blessings before the Torah reading this morning. Yahamor, Karen Batsara la Torah. Come forward, Karen, daughter of Sarah, to the Torah. Shabbat shalom. This is the blessing before the Torah. Bar hu et aranai hamevorach. Baruch Adonai Hamvarach Leolam Vaed Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Haolam Asher Bar Harbanu Mikol Hamim 
Venatan lanu et torato, Baru hata adonai, no tain ha Bless the Lord, the Blessed One. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has chosen us from all peoples and given us his Torah. Blessed are you, O Lord, giver of the Torah. Amen. And today's Torah portion is Numbers chapter 16, verses 1 through 10. Now Korach, the son of Yitzar, the son of Kahat, the son of Levi, along with Datan and Av. Aviram, the sons of Eliav, and On, the son of Pelet, descendants of Reuben, took men and rebelled against Moshe. Siding with them were 250 men of Israel, leaders of the community, key members of the council, men of reputation. They assembled themselves against Moshe and Aaron and said to them, you take too much on yourselves. After all, the entire community is holy every one of them, and Adonai is among them. So why do you lift yourselves up above Adonai's assembly? When Moshe heard this, he fell on his face. Then he said to Korach and his whole group, in the morning, Adonai will show who are his and who is the holy person he will allow to approach him. Yes, he will bring whomever he chooses near to himself. Do this, take censers, Korach and all your group, Put fire in them and put incense in them before Adonai tomorrow. The one whom Adonai chooses will be the one who is holy. It is you, you sons of Levi, who are taking too much on yourselves. Then Moshe said to Korah, listen here, you sons of Levi. Is it for you a mere trifle that the, Lord, that the God of Israel has separated you from the community of Israel to bring you close to himself? so that you can do the work in the tabernacle of Adonai and stand before the community serving them. He has brought you close and all your brothers, the sons of Levi with you. Now you want the office of Kohen too? Amen. Amen. And the blessing after the Torah. Baruch Ata Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Asher Natan Lanu Torah Temet, Bechaye Olam Nata Petoheinu, Baruch Ata Adonai, Notein HaToram. Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has given us the Torah of truth, and has planted eternal life in our midst. Blessed are you, O Lord, giver of the Torah. Amen. You may be seated now. This is a time for the prophetic reading, and our sister Marva is going to be leading us from pages 105 and 106 from your Siddurs. And let me remind you that this is a beautiful prophetic reading. Shabbat Shalom. This is the prophetic reading, um, Joel 2, 23, and 25, 28, and 32. Be glad, O children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he has given you the early rain according to righteousness, and he will cause the rain to come down for you, both the early rain and the latter rain in the first month. And I will restore to you the years that the locust has eaten, the can canker worm, the caterpillar, and the palmer worm, my great army that I sent among you. And you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied, and you shall praise the name of the Lord, your God, who has dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never again be ashamed and you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I am the Lord, your God, and there is no other, and it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon, <clears throat> upon all flesh, 
and your sons and your daughters will, shall prophesy. Uh, prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams, your young men shall see visions, and it shall come to pass that who, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. For salvation shall be in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem, as the Lord has said, and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. A response reading from Psalm 92, 1 through 5. 8 through 10, and 12 through 15. <clears throat> it is good to give thanks to the Lord and to sing praises to your name, O oh, <clears throat> oh, Most High. The the with the ten string lute, with the harp, the resounding music upon the lyre. How great are your works, O Lord! Your thoughts are very deep. For behold your enemies, O Lord, for behold your enemies will perish. All who do iniquity will be scattered. The righteous man will flourish like the palm tree, he will grow high like a cedar in Lebanon. They will still yield fruit in old age. They shall be full of sap and very green. To declare that the Lord is upright. He is my rock, and there is no unrighteous in him. Amen. Thank you, Marva. And now is the time for um, the Brick Hadashah blessings and the readings. And this is the time for Assistant Shayra Campos to please come forth on page 71 and 72 from your doors. Again, this is the Brick Hadashah. And so you know we, we use the complete Jewish Bible uh, for all our readings. How many? Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. So the blessing before the new covenant reading. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, asher natan lanu ha-mashiach Yeshua, v'hadibrot shel habrit ha-hadasha, baruch atah Adonai. In English, blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has given us Messiah Yeshua and the commandments of the new covenant. Blessed are you, O Lord, giver of the new covenant. Amen. So our bit Hadashah is in Matthew 26, 13, 24. Yes, I tell you that throughout the whole world, wherever this good news is proclaimed, what she has done will be told in her memory. Then one of the twelve, the one called Yehuda from Creot, went to the head Kohanim and said, What are you willing to give me if I turn Yeshua over to you? They counted out thirty silver coins and gave them to Yehuda. From then on, he looked for a good opportunity to betray him. On the first day of Matzah, the Talmudin came to Yeshua and asked, where do you want us to prepare your Seder? Go into the city to so and so, he replied, and tell him that the rabbi says, my time is near, my Talmudin and I are celebrating Pesach at your house. The Talmudin did as Yeshua directed and prepared the Seder. When evening came, Yeshua reclined with the 12 Talmudin, and as they were eating, he said, Yes, I tell you that one of you is going to betray me. They became terribly upset and began asking one after the other, Lord, you don't mean me, do you? 
He answered, the one who dips his matzah in the dish with me is the one who will betray me. The son of man will die just as the Tanakh says he will. But woe to that man by whom the son of man is betrayed. It would have been better for him to have never been born. The blessing after the new covenant reading. Baruch ata Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, asher natan lanu hadavar ha-emet, vehaye olam nata botahenu, baruch ata Adonai, rotein ha-brit ha-hadashah. Amen. Together in English. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has given us the word of truth and has planted life everlasting in our midst. Blessed are you, O Lord, giver of the new covenant. Amen. Baruch Hashem, we bless the Lord for our sisters who have participated, and this happens only every three months. Every three months we have the uh, opportunity for our sisters to bless us um, with some liturgical portions. Can we get an amen? Baruch Hashem. Please rise and let's praise the Lord for He is good. It is time for us to shout for joy. Don't name it. 
and gotta rise. Life, 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 
la 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 Take a moment and greet one another and say Shabbat Shalom. I am so happy you made it this morning and we rejoice in God's presence. Rejoice in his presence. Hallelujah. You may go back to your seats. Um, welcome to Bethlehem Messianic Congregation. Thank you for being with us this morning. Thank you for being here. <laughs> it is a joy. It is a joy to spend the Shabbat with, um, with our family, with our community. So thank you for joining us once again this Saturday. To you at home, Shabbat Shalom. Welcome to our live stream. But if you're watching this afterwards, if you're watching this after the live, uh, welcome. Thank you for joining us. It is a pleasure um, that we are together in his presence today. So let, uh, let me take a few minutes while you guys um, all settle. And I would like to know if we have anybody here for the first time. Uh, um, in person, anybody here for the first time, can you please stand up and tell us your name so we get to know you more? Anybody? Anybody here for the first time? 
Can you please give, uh, tell us your name so we get to know you more? Look. Oh, that's a beautiful name. Congregation, how do we say? Shabbat. Welcome. Shabbat Shalom. Amen. Amen. Anybody else here for the first time? I don't think so. And how about you at home? Is this the first time you are joining? Please let us know. And I think, Crystal, you have a friend with you? Oh, it's your sister. Okay. Hi. Welcome back. I remember you. <laughs> I remember you. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you for being with us today. So let me take a few minutes and I will greet those of you that have your names on the chat. I see Mac Jones. He says, Shabbat Shalom, brethren in, in the house of faith from Lincoln, Nebraska. Shabbat Shalom. Good morning. Um, Dave Gold. Uh, Shabbat Shalom, everyone from Mesa, Arizona. Jackie Skills, a blessed Shabbat. Shul to all from downtown Long Beach. And we also have Sam Bailey, Shabbat Shalom all. Uh, Betty and Lou, Shabbat Shalom everyone. And from Sister Ingrid, Ingrid Kern, Shabbat Shalom. And Rosalyn, she says Shabbat Shalom everyone. We miss you, Rosalyn. And Najeli and Addy, most uh, likely, Shabbat Shalom. We also miss you guys. And Maria Honor, Shabbat Shalom. Thank you for joining us. And if you haven't put your names on the chat, you're more than welcome to. And then at the end of the service, I'll be more than happy to acknowledge your presence with us. So let me take a few minutes and give you a few announcements so that, we, um, so that you know what is going on here at Bethlehem. So remember, if you need translation, si necesitas traducción del mensaje, Sister Mir Miriam estará traduciéndolo. Así es de que... Oh, Victor. Victor will be translating the message. Eh, Victor estará traduciendo el mensaje el día de hoy, así es de que obtengan su audífono para que puedan escuchar el mensaje en español. Amen. Thank you, Victor. And uh, if, if the first time, if this is the first time that you are here with us, this is a way that you can connect. Uh, please text the word Shalom to the number 562-512-7513 and complete the form. It's, there's a little um, application that you have to fill out so that we get to know you a little bit more. And, uh, and this is a good way to start communicating with us. If this is the first time that you are joining on YouTube or if this is the first time you are here in person. And um, so if you would like to join us for Midrash, um, there is a one-time registration that you need to do. Uh, so you would have to text the word Torah to the same number, 562-512-7513, and complete the form. You can also use the QR code that is on the, on the, on the screen, and uh, that would take you directly to filling out your information so that, we, uh, so that you can join us for Midrash. After the service, we usually have Midrash, and also you can join us for Oneg. Uh, we usually break bread together. We share our meals together after the service, so it's something nice. Oneg means delight, and it is a delight to be able to um, you know, socialize and, 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 and be with one another. So if you want to join us, this is a way that you can do so. You can also click on the link that was uh, given to you after you register. And if you have any prayer request, text the word prayer to the number 562-512-7513 and complete the form. And do you have any praise reports or any questions? You can email us at info at live. So this is a good email that you can use to communicate with us as well. And also, um, we extend an invitation for you to pray with us in the morning, Monday through Thursdays from 7 to 8 a.m. Uh, like I said, in the morning, we are getting together through Zoom. So please join us if you haven't done so. It is a blessing to start our day praying together. Um, as you may know, on Mondays we pray for vision, on Tuesdays for a good sustenance, and on Wednesdays for family and healing, and on Thursdays we have testimonies and praise. And I just would like to share one um, praise report or one testimony from this past week, uh, which is very, uh, very uh, joyful, um, just because we had two members of our community who have a new granddaughter. So, Baruch Hashem for that. <laughs> We praise the Lord for the new babies, and we also praise the Lord that it was, uh, uh, they're healthy, and it was a good fast delivery, so praise the Lord for that. Amen, amen. So don't forget that now you can give online, so if you have any tidings or any offerings, you can use the website, 
Bethlehem.live and go to the Give button. And it's simple, it's easy and fast. So, um, and remember that scripture declares, but who am I and what is my people that we should be able to give so willingly in this way? For all things come from you so that we have given you what is already yours. Amen. First Chronicles 29, 14. And if you, if you are here in person, there is a tobacco box located by the main doors that you can use. We have envelopes uh, that you can fill out and uh, for your tidings and your offerings. So now uh, we move on to today's parasham, Korach, and we have Rabbi John sharing the message this morning. Thank you. Thank you, Rabbi. Shabbat shalom, everyone. Um, before we get into the Torah portion this morning, I'd like to um, take a moment and and invite the, the Para family to come forth. Um, this, this is the moment when um, the Para family are going to be uh, relocating. They're going to Northern California. And so um, we're going to miss you dearly. I know that sometimes um, we, we have to move on. You know, people have plans. Sometimes, you know, it's related to work. Sometimes it's related to family. Um, but thank God for technology so there is no distances anymore. So you're going to be in Northern California physically, but in spirit, you will always be here. And we have spoken a couple of times, and I said, well, you know, you're going to be living in Northern California, but for high holidays, you will always be required to be here. <laughs> and so they agreed. And so please rise. Please come, come to the front. Let, me, um, let us pray for you. We want to pray for you. We, we, um, we want to ask the Lord to... Uh, to bless your, your plans. I'm going to ask Elder Kurt to please come forth and help me so that we can pray for them. So we pray for, for them so they can be, um, they can have an easy relocation, they can have a traveling mercies, they can have blessings and success on their plans in the merit of our Lord Messiah Yeshua. And so, community, let's bow our heads and let's pray for them. Abinu Malkin, our Father, our King, may your name be praised forever. Lord, we want to thank you, Father, for blessing us by being at one mishpacha. We are a family, Lord, that is consecrated to you. We have enjoyed the love, the care, um, the, the times when, when we cry together, laugh together. We've been um, following you, learning together, asking questions, and this journey is a beautiful journey. And each member of this community is so precious and valuable. And Abba, we pray that you be with the Para family as they're moving forward. And Father, you know their, their, their endeavors, you know what are the desires of their hearts. And we pray, Lord, that you can bless them, Lord, that you can open new doors of opportunity for them. And for those who are going to school, and Father, we, uh, we ask that you open those doors so they can have the, the best and the highest quality of education for them. We pray that they can find the right job. And we pray, Father, that, um, that you bless them, Lord. They can be satisfied. They can be happy. And though we're going to miss them dearly, but we know that it's your will, Father, and you have opened the doors for them. So we pray, Father, that in the merit of our Lord and Messiah Yeshua, they can continue being faithful unto you, and that your name be glorified. In his name we pray. And together we say, Amen. 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 So, you know, why don't we take a moment, we give him a hug quickly. Come on, community. The Lord is good. And, um,
And just to make sure that they're not going to forget about us, um, I'm going to ask, uh, I'm going to put uh, Shaul as the one who's going to be delivering the message on Yom Kippur. How about that? <laughs> You at home, we, we miss you. We pray that you can join us. Um, this is just a sign of how, how much we appreciate and love each other, that we love you too. And we, we wish you were here. Um, but we know you're faithfully here every Shabbat, and you're part of our family as well. So we want to make sure that you uh, understand that and know that, that we love you. We, we care for you. We wish you were here so we can do more things. But... Baruch Hashem, you know, our community is growing and, and we see that there is more people around the world who is connecting. Um, and for those of you who will be watching this video, we also want to invite you to join us more regularly. And, and if you can make an effort to make a, a visit in person, then uh, we will love to see you. And, and this is something that we look forward every Shabbat. And so we have our, we also had our um, family uh, fun night um, last Thursday, and it was a success. We had a bunch of young ones and all sorts of activities, and, and um, we pray and hope that during July we can have another uh, family fun night. And so please make, make um, some plans. We're going to be announcing it, and um, we look forward to meeting you again. Amen. Hashem, God is good. In any event, let me let me remind you that if you don't have the church app, you can always download the church app and you can connect with us. Um, that is the best way for us to keep in touch. Um, anyone here doesn't have the church app? Please raise your hand. So most of you are in, in the church app. So that means we can connect. We, we can know exactly what's going on in our lives. And once again, you know, we, we miss those who haven't been able to uh, meet with us in person. Our family, we love you. We love you. We, um, we don't say goodbye. We just say we'll see you on, on next Shabbat. Amen. Baruch Hashem. You may be seated now. Well, today we have a beautiful parasha portion. We have a parasha that is not um, usually we we've been talking about the setup and the formation of the Mishkan, the tabernacle, and now we continue with what happens once once we have a place of worship. And so it seems as if. For the most part, we have a general idea. We, we, we think that we understand what happens once we have a place of worship. And it's plain and simple, right? There is a rabbi, there is a pastor, there is whomever. And he or she will be in charge of everything. Baruch Hashem. Amen. No, it's not so simple. No, it's not that easy. It takes more than that. And so this parasha is actually teaching us something beautiful. I have a question for you. Is it authority or power? And so today we're going to learn the foolish side of leadership versus the godly side of leadership. 
And for that, I have to ask you a few questions. Have you ever found yourself in any of these two positions, or perhaps in between? Or maybe you have been negatively affected by someone who didn't have authority and acted as if. Or by someone who did not have power and wanted to enforce authority. How about that? That's interesting, right? Have you ever found yourself in a position? Maybe you have been given a position of leadership and perhaps you did not know exactly what am I supposed to do with it. And maybe you haven't been conferred a position and yet you do have a position of authority and you do not know. Maybe we should begin by asking a question. What is authority or power and who has what? What is authority? What is power? And is a leader supposed to have power? Is a leader supposed to have authority? Well, let's define that. In the managerial world, authority and power are not the same, although often considered the same. And by definition, authority is a right conferred explicitly to a figure or entity for the purpose of leading and executing. Authority, by the way, goes with the job or the position. And power, on the other hand, is an individual's capacity to influence decisions. You can think about what we learned from the book of Acts when the Lord said, do not leave Jerusalem, but you will receive authority, right? wrong. You will receive power. Say it. Power. power. Oops. Wait. I always thought that it was authority. What will you receive according to scripture? Power. You will receive power. Power for what? By definition is the capacity to influence people. That is the power. When God is in you, then you have the capacity to influence people for godly living. Can I get an amen? amen? And so, by the way, authority is part of a larger concept of power. And so, maybe I should ask another question. And this is going back into the circle, right? So, what comes first? Power or authority? Think for a moment. Don't jump into conclusions too soon. Let's get into it. Let, let us dissect. Let's open it up and see what's in it. And so, well, what happens when people get it wrong and act upon it? Then you and I have seen what happens, especially at home, at work, at any organization that you belong to, perhaps. You've seen it. Congregations, the country, the state, you name it, right? What happens when someone gets these concepts wrong, and they act upon it. Then we see chaos, damage, hurt, and above all things, time which is lost, and this is irreversible, to say the least. Time is very important. So many times we say time is money. Time is not money. Time is life. And so the minute someone is not acting according to their calling, then that's going to create damage. And then we're going to deviate from the calling that God has given upon us. And in that deviation, then people get hurt. This is why we have to learn the principles of leadership according to what God has established. And Parashah and portion Korach is to teach us those principles. And so when we learn about Korach, let me go back to scripture. It begins by saying, now Korach, the son of Yitzchak, the son of Kehat, the son of Levi, along with Datan and Abiram, the sons of Eliab, and On, the son of Pelet, descendants of Reuben, took men and rebelled against Moshe. Siding with them were 250 men, leaders of the community, leaders of the community key members of the council, men of reputation. And they assembled themselves against Moshe and Aharon, and they said to them, you take too much on yourselves. After all, the entire community is holy. Can I paraphrase that? You're not the only holy ones. So let me ask you, was Moshe and Aharon 
the only holy ones. This is what Korach is saying. You're not the only ones. All of us are holy. Then we should ask our question, why was Korach rebelling? Why was he, even though he was already a leader, and he brought people, key people, people that had already that leadership position, key people. So I guess a question that we should be asking ourselves is, is it okay for us to want authority or power? Should I be pursuing authority and power? What do you think? Because it would be so easy for us just to judge poor Korah and say he was evil, period. Well, he was not evil, right? And mind you, evil is not evil per se, because we have our composition, our makeup is we have the evil inclination and the good inclination. And the evil inclination, we call it evil as a way to differentiate, but it's not evil per se. Evil is what comes after the fact. But is there urgency that we have to incline ourselves towards one side? But we have the good inclination and the evil inclination so we can find balance in our lives. And we become sinners when we give ourselves into the evil inclination and then we transgress. And then we go astray and then we do not respect the Torah of the Lord. And then that's when we begin to reap the benefits or the, the aftermath, the wages of sin, according to scripture. And so Korah had this inclination. But the question is, without jumping into conclusions, was it okay for him to be desiring this authority or power? Well, the Torah brings us a very important and relevant topic about leadership. And leadership is a skill, it's a gift that needs to be taught, learned, and developed. I had a conversation with uh, the teaching team, and I said, you know, there is a, I, I remember reading a book, and this is an old book, but seriously, it opened my eyes, because since I was a kid, um, not long ago, I, I was wondering, like, how can I be a good leader? And then I came across a book, which is called, A Leader Is Not Born, Is Made. And so, I always wondered, like, well, maybe, maybe it isn't for me. Maybe I don't have what it takes to be a leader until I found this book. And so I learned that it needs to be taught, it needs to be learned, and it needs to be developed. It's a journey when it comes to leadership. And by the way, leadership is part of our lives. We find leadership at home, school, politics, hospitals, work, businesses, ministry, and it can happen locally or globally. It's so important that it's even mentioned as a gift in the body of the Messiah by Rabbi Shaul or the Apostle Paul in the book of Romans chapter 12, verse 8 from the complete Jewish Bible. And I read, if you are in a position of leadership, lead with diligence and zeal. Leadership is important. It's needed. A house cannot be successful a home cannot be successful if the dad or the mom are not leading properly effectively but what happens when the mom is usurping the authority of the dad and what happens when the dad is not taking his position of authority or what happens when any of them are leading but the children are leading hello oh okay just sound check it happens, right? I've been told. I've been told. And so, notice how important leadership is. So, so many times I think there's people and, um, you know, sometimes we, we, we feel that leadership is very complex, that, that, you know, it requires a lot, and sometimes we are afraid of leadership. Well, Korah was not afraid of leadership, but Korah was looking for something else. So, is it okay to want authority or power? The answer is yes but in the right way, for God wants and needs leaders who can obey his word, as mentioned in Psalms 103, verse 19 to 22. And we say that every morning in our prayer meetings. Quote, Adonai has established his throne in heaven. His kingly power rules everything. Bless Adonai, you angels of his, you mighty warriors who obey his word, who carry out his orders. 
Bless Adonai, all his troops who serve him and do what he wants. Bless Adonai, all his works in every place where he rules. Bless Adonai, my soul. Amen. Notice how everything is about the will of God. In my business, is about the will of God. In my family, it's about the will of God. In my career, it's about the will of God. No, I'm not talking in a religious way. Because everything, Adonai has established his throne in heaven. His kingly power rules everything. Everything. Well, I did not know. But for the record, you need to know that I have my own card. <laughs> what else? My own house. Everything. The Lord is in charge of everything. And it's in our best interest to understand and know that everything has been established by Adonai and he's ruling everything. And you know, we want God to rule everything. Can I get an amen? amen? Look around and see how much inequality do we have. Why? It's because of the leadership. It's not the lack of resources. It's not the lack of money. Think for a moment. Someone said, do you think that gold will ever be uh, extracted forever on earth? I don't think so. Think for, think for a moment. We've been on this earth, according to a biblical estimation, for about 6,000 years. And according to science, we've been here for millions and millions of years. And the resources are, are not, have not been ended. They keep going. And God is always in control of everything. And yet, and yet, so many times, we act as if, you know what? I'm going to control these resources because I have the power. I have the authority. That is not what is happening and affecting our world. It's a lack of good leadership. And so this is why it's important to understand what is the difference between a leader, what is the difference between power and authority, and ultimately, what is the difference between having a calling, a specific calling in your life. If you don't have a specific calling or you don't understand that you've been called for something specifically, then we're going to be bouncing our heads. We're going to go back and forth and not finding through meaning and direction. And so it's okay for us to have to one authority and power. The kingdom of God on earth needs men and women in leadership. Let me repeat that. The kingdom of God on earth needs men and women in leadership. If you, if you think for a moment and you, and you ever envision being in God's presence and not doing it in the world, then we're not fulfilling our calling. God created us so we can rule, so we can manage the world. And that was the first mitzvah that was given to Adam. Rule the world. Administer the world. And that was the first thing he did. And he was setting boundaries and he was learning how to manage and do things well. But obviously, we overpopulated, right? And what happens? I think there is a rule, and if someone knows it, please correct me. But I've learned and I've heard that it takes, if you go beyond, I may be wrong, but just to get an idea, if you go beyond 100, I think it's like, let me just give a number. Um, I, I, I think it's about 200 people before chaos starts. In other words, we need leaders. One leader is able to direct 100 people, 200 people, and if there's only one leader beyond that, it's gonna be chaotic. So we need more leaders. And I know some people go like, well, the Bible, you, I don't wanna hear about leaders. We wanna hear about servants. Because that's what we are. Yeah, a leader is a servant. And a leader is not a manager, per se, in that respect, right? A leader manages. But a leader is not someone who's going to enforce coercive power, right, upon people. It's someone who leads. And there are different styles, different ways of leading. Korach, a man. Well, Korach and a group of men, right? These guys were leaders 
but they were on the wrong side of the leadership equation. And so let us learn this lesson from the Torah and let's begin by understanding. Korah, a man with many good traits, but aiming to be what he was not. Namely, Moshe. He wanted to be Moshe and Aharon, or Aaron. And according to some commentators, these two represented a king and a priest, or the kingship and the priesthood. And Korah wanted to be both. You know, this is prophetic. This is something interesting. Because the only one who can occupy both offices is the Mashiach. He is the only one who can be a king and a priest. Can I get an amen? And Yeshua is the Mashiach. And he has both. He is a king and he is a high priest. And so Korach resented that he was not selected for high office. Says the Midrash, quote, Korach taught, my mazal, my destiny indicates that I was born for greatness. And then goes on to point out the reasons why Korach thought that way. A, he was coming from the clan of Kahat, one of the, one of the groups in, uh, within the Levites. B, he was in charge of carrying the ark. He knew exactly what was, you know, this, the ark, the ark of the covenant, the most important thing in the tabernacle. They were in charge of, of doing something like that. And on top of it, he was a very intelligent and learned man. So he had the traits that would require for someone actually to be successful. And again, the Midrash tells us, Korach said, I am destined to be the source of all this greatness. How can it be that I myself should not achieve rank of special importance? This is what was going on in his mind. But you know, Korah's premise is false. His argument is found in Numbers 16.3. You take too much on yourselves. After all, the entire community is holy. Every one of them. And Adonai is among them. So why do you lift yourselves up above Adonai's assembly. Korak is making an argument. And he says, you know, it's because you think that you're holier than the rest of the community. But that's not what is taking place. And notice what happens when someone is not clear about it. Korak forgot something that it was actually mentioned in a preceding chapter. In Numbers... Um, in Numbers 15, 38, we, we see the e equality in holiness. And there is a symbol of this equality in holiness for the community. And if, if someone can think about it, what would, that, what would that be? How can we distinguish the equality of holiness in a community? And especially for Israel. And this is God himself who has given them that sign, that symbol of equality. And we find that in the book of Numbers. 15, chapter, I'm sorry, chapter 15, verse 38 to 41. And I'm going to read it in case you haven't figured it out. But hint, hint. Tzitziot. Tzitziot. Speak to the people of Israel. Instruct them to make through their generation tzitziot on the corners of their garments and put the tzitzit on each corner of the blue a blue thread, it is to be a tzitzit for you to look at and thereby remember all of Adonai's misvot and obey them so that you won't go around whatever your own heart and eyes lead you to prostitute yourself. But it will help you remember and obey all my misvot, my commandments, and be holy for your God. I am Adonai, your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt in order to be your God, and I am Adonai, your God. Korach is saying, you think you're holier than that? And, and I can only imagine. Moshe said, Korach, I also have tzitzit. You have tzitzit. We are holy. What are you talking about? We're on the same level. Then what is Korach really arguing about? So it's not about holiness. Why is he making it a big argument about holiness? This isn't about holiness. All of the community are holy. They were there when God spoke on Mount Sinai. They were there. 
They signed the covenant before God Almighty. They were part of it, active part of it. So Korach is making a wrong argument. Therefore, Moshe and Aharon are not taking too much upon themselves because they are being elevated for that position of authority by God himself. And this is a specific calling. And this is when we get it wrong. This reminds me of a conversation I had with someone many years ago. And it was interesting because this person had, you know, a higher degree of education. And in this conversation, this person said, you know, I don't understand why God is always using people less prepared than me. I said, that's interesting. Why is God using people less prepared than you? Well, I guess the answer is in the statement. You may be educated, but you're not prepared. And so we, we can argue, we can say, listen, in the journey of becoming a leader, Korah was already a leader. He had, he had power. He had power. But in his journey, he was right at the middle. And he became selfish. And he was not willing to finish all the preparation before he could be given authority. And yet he exercised that power. And this is what we learn. This is the problem of, of not being able to see the position we have at the moment. At the moment. You know, it's hard. Because we have developed this instant gratification mentality. I wanted it yesterday, not now. Yesterday. Travel today, pay tomorrow. <laughs> not, that's not a commercial. It could be a commercial, but not today. And see, we develop this mentality, and we don't understand that there is a process. And the process is for us to be conformed according to what God wants for our lives. You know, I think I mentioned a couple of times when I was, when I was eight, um, I, I wanted to be 15. When I was 15, I wanted to be 20. When I was 20, I wanted to be 25. When I became 29, I, want to become, I wanted to become 25. <laughs> but I, I, I went as far as wearing my, my dad's clothing. I was wearing his ties and everything. I felt like I want to be there because... <laughs> You know, I didn't want to wait for the process. Just, and there's some people, that, even today, um, they dye their hair just to, just, to, just to pretend that they have gray hair. They don't want to wait for the process. But let me reassure you that they will come. <laughs> Make no mistake, it, it, it's going to come, right? Um, and, it, and, you know, it's, it's about a process. And the process is actually teaching us. And it's so important to become a good leader according to what God is teaching us. It's so sad because Korah was a man, a man of honor, a man who had these abilities and traits, and he was very powerful, and he did not know that he was very powerful. He was very powerful. And so, you know, when we don't go through the process, that's when we, we get blinded, you know. We, we don't see the position we have at the moment, and we that we can develop in the process as to be given the opportunity to have authority. But this process is what sets real and godly leaders apart. It's a process. So I do remember when I, when I went to see Rabbi Fisher first time, and I said, you know, I have this calling, and Rabbi Fisher said, good. Okay. Uh, there is only one requirement, and that requirement is going to take you uh, four years before we can actually get into the matter. And so go through the process and come back to me. And you know, by the grace of Hashem, I took heed and I said, yes, I will do that. So I went through the process of four years, and, and the Lord blessed me. And that's what it takes, right? It takes for us to understand that there is a process. 
Midrash Rabbah adds a very important contrast by pointing the words, he took men. Now Korach, the son of Yitzhar, the son of Kehat, the son of Levi, along with Datan and Abiram, the son of Eliab, and On, and the son of Pelet, descendants of Reuben, took men and rebelled against Moshe. What is the meaning of he took men? He influenced people. He used power, but not the right power and not for the right purpose. Now we see how powerful this man was. Korah used coercive power to try to take a leadership position that was never conferred to him, but he coveted for selfish purposes. He was already a Levite. He was a holy man. He was already dealing with the holiness of Hashem. Then what else do you want? Well, I want to be Moshe. But you can't be Moshe. There is only one Moshe. And here comes the problem when we start comparing ourselves to different people. We should never, ever compare to someone else. Because the minute God created you, you were the only one. You are the only one. I keep telling that to my wife. When God created me, I'm the only one. But she doesn't believe me. <laughs> we have to understand that there is a good purpose and a selfish purpose. And, and so Korah did the wrong thing because he was not respecting a calling from God. And look, it is true that Moshe was not perfect. Elder Kurt was teaching us last Shabbat, right? And he was, he was teaching us about, you know, the, the struggles that he went through by becoming a leader. And we argued, and I said, you know, if we think about it, repeatedly, I don't know, even uh, said, uh, he, he said to um, Yehoshua, he said, you know, you got to be bold. You got to be strong. And he repeated that a couple of times. Why? Well, obviously, that was an area that he needed to be strengthened, right? You have to be bold. Well, it's not easy to be bold. And you have to be strong. So Moses was in a process of becoming a leader. And when he brings the people out of Egypt, and he's right in front of a sea, he turns around and he sees millions of people following him. And behind these millions of people, we see Pharaoh and his army. And in front of him, there's nothing but just the sea. What is he thinking? Oh, my God. At that moment, there was no radio, so otherwise we would have heard something like, Houston, we got a problem. <laughs> and what happens? Then he turns to God. He says, what? God, what can I do? And the answer is, Moses, what do you have in your hand? Oh, this? Yeah. Well, use it. How? Exercise authority. Okay. And he did it. And time after time, Moses is in the process of becoming a great leader. And he became the most humble man on earth. That is the big difference of becoming a godly leader and someone like Korah. How bad is the power of someone who's not in, in the right mind and with the right purpose? And this is for all of us. We need to understand because there is a twofold teaching right here. Someone who wants to be what he's not, and those who already have power, but they are now convinced to do something wrong. Now, does that sound familiar? It happens in our days. It happens on TV. 24-7, if you're watching TV, which I would advise not to, because guess what? It has power. It has power to influence people. Um, not to, during this past week that I, I was going to different places and I noticed that some people were, were wearing masks again. And it was kind of odd. And so I was with one of my coworkers and he says, have you noticed that? I said, yeah. And so we were wondering, why are some people wearing masks? I mean, there's nothing wrong with that, right? But I mean, why? So when it says that he took men, well, 
even though these, these people were very special, apparently they were without wisdom or something happened. And here is the wisdom. This is what we must learn this morning. Wisdom, by definition, is the ability to discern between two opposites, as in right and wrong. And to give an example, think of, about Nineveh and notice what happened. The Lord had compassion upon Nineveh, a city who was very evil. But why did God have compassion upon Nineveh? And the word declares because they did not know how to discern between the right and the left. Whoa. Right. It, you know, we can come to that point, not being able to understand the two opposites. But how these men follow after Korah is because they, even though they, they, they had the power and they were men of renown, the answer is by instigation. In other words, appealing to people's emotions. That is, negative emotions. But only people who are not grounded can be easily moved. And this is why it's important. This is why this Torah portion is so important in our lives. You have to have a strong foundation. You cannot appeal to your emotions. Nowadays, we have something that's called emotional intelligence. And I agree to some extent. Because it's important. You know, you can have a perception of of something, and then until someone comes to you and says, hey, have you noticed this? And he appeals to your emotions. And if he uses a good emotion, well, that's good, Baruch Hashem, that can motivate you. But if he or she uses a negative emotion, then that's going to instigate, and you're going to overreact, and you are going to have a negative reaction. And that's what happened. And so we have to be smart, and we have to be wise to be able to discern what happens when it comes to leadership. There's a lot of politics, especially in corporate America, right? You can't go to the next level because there is a lot of politics. You hear a lot of people saying things and they come to you, hey, you know, by the way, and they play games, right? You have to side with me and this is amazing. And so Korah was doing something similar. He went to this man, he instigated them, he said, you know, this is wrong. He, they feel they're holy. We are holy too. And you're absolutely right. Yeah, and then off they go. And there was no discernment. They were reacting. And when the Torah states in Exodus 23, verse 2, you shall not follow a multitude to do evil. You must not follow the multitude. You must not. It's a mitzvah. It's a command. You have to be able to discern. You have to be able to use wisdom. You can't just go with your emotions. Have you ever been part of that? Have you ever felt that influence, that coercive power? I've seen it. I've, I've seen when, when, you know, when, when someone is so angry and, and rises and, and goes like, but this is what's happening. Haven't you seen that? And then people go like, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. No, no, that's not right. That's wrong. Totally wrong. And yet, you know, sometimes people allow that power of influence in their lives. And this is what happens. And so this is something that we must learn. And I'm about to, I'm about to close. Just half an hour more. The Torah states, you shall not follow a multitude to do evil. And you know, in the Talmud, there is a section called Pirkei Avot, the ethics of the fathers. This is what the rabbis are teaching based on wisdom, you know, over the centuries. And Pirkei Avot 112 says, Hillel says, be of the disciples of Aaron, loving peace and pursuing peace loving the creatures and bringing them closer to the Torah. And this is relevant because have you ever read Psalm 133? We've been singing about it. We can do better than that. It's okay. 
But we read, right? Oh, how good, how pleasant it is for brothers to live together in harmony. It's like a fragrant oil on the head that runs down over the beard. And it says something special here. It says, over the beard of Aaron. And flows down on the collar of his robes. It's like the dew of Hermon that settles on the mountain of Zion. For it was there that Adonai ordained the blessing of everlasting life. Question, why did King David wrote about Aaron and about the oil and about there Adonai ordained the blessing of everlasting life? Why? Because he was pointing back to the incident of Korah. And so, Pirkei Abot says that Aaron was the opposite of Korah because Aaron had this ability of bringing peace and harmony. And the Midrash says that, for instance, when there was a dispute, when there was two people that were having issues because of something and they were not talking to each other, Aaron will go to one of them and say, hey, Joshua, uh, I understand that you and Moshe have some intense fellowship. And he says, yeah, well, guess what? Moshe is telling me that, you know, he, he's going to forget about it. And, you know, he, he says that there's nothing to be worried about. Oh, did he say that? Yeah. As a matter of fact, he wants to meet with you. He says, oh, okay. Well, I'll, I'll look for him. Okay, great. And off goes Aaron to the other side. He says, Moshe, hey. Well, I understand that you had issues with Joshua. He says, yeah. Well, guess what? Joshua says that there's no more problems. Everything has been settled, and he really wants to meet with, with you. He says, really? Oh, wow, those are good news. And he says, okay, bye. And lo and behold, here comes Moshe and Joshua. He says, hey, shalom, shalom, my brother. That's what the Midrash is actually teaching and saying. That you be like the disciples of Aaron. Instead of instigating people and being a bad, a bad leader and using coercive power, be the disciples of Aaron who can bring harmony and bring blessing of everlasting life. This is what King David had in mind when he wrote Psalm 133. This is like the fragrant oil on the head that runs down over the beard, over the beard of Aaron, and flows down on the color of his robes. This is amazing. And this is why Sh uh, Shmuel Samuel mentioned that Adonai appointed Moshe and Aharon. Why? Because this was about unity in leadership. And don't get me wrong. In our humanity, we all make mistakes, right? How many of us have done something wrong that we actually regret? I must have done something. I must have said something that affected my leaders at one point. And I ask for forgiveness. Because that was, I'm not justifying myself, but that's part of our human nature, our evil inclination. And this is why we must submit ourselves unto the Lord and learn how to control our evil inclination. But in order for us to do something like that, we need to have wisdom and we need to study the word of the Lord. And so, can you imagine what happens when there is strife at home with the husband and the wife? Well, we hope and pray that one of our sons can become a disciple of Aaron. Or daughters can come to one and say, hey, you know, by the way, dad says that he loves you a lot. He feels so bad about it. Like, oh, really? Yeah. And go back to the other side and say, hey, by the way, mom says that she loves you a lot. And that she's really regretting what happened to you. As a matter of fact, she's going to buy you a car and um, you're going to be happy. Right? <laughs> and so they come together and guess what? They make amends, right? And they bring harmony. And they bring a blessing, right? And this is why in, a, in the Haftarah, we, we see how... Samuel begins by saying, by quoting about Aaron and Moshe. And why is he quoting about Aaron and Moses? It's because he understood the power of unity and the good leadership and the calling that Aaron and I had bestowed upon Moshe. Korach, I'm closing now, is the seed and its fruit is pride for coercive power. Moshe and Aaron is the fruit of his spirit, leading with a humble heart with the right spirit, 
with authority and power the way God wants it. And so let's pray that we can become a leader like Moses, like Aaron. Let's pray that we can use the power that we have because you shall receive power. And that has already taken place 2,000 years ago, as far as I know and as far as I'm concerned. But the Lord has poured out his spirit. And now we have received the power, the power to influence the world, the word of Hashem. And not a coercive power, but a godly power. Can I get an amen? amen. So let's bow our heads and let's pray. Abinu Malkinu, our Father, our King, may your name be praised forever. Lord, we want to thank you, Father, for your word. We thank you, Lord, because you're teaching us. And indeed, the world needs, the world is in need of leaders, good leaders. We need leaders, Father, because, because what is taking place out there is, is, is not the responsibility solely on the government. For the government is comprised of people like us. Any one of us can actually rise up to occupy office. And if we have the power and we have the desire to make changes, then you have given us the power. The problem is when we don't know how to use this power, but we have learned that there is a right way of using the power and the wrong way of using power. And Father, we pray that, that we use the power in, in accord with your word and that, that we can accomplish more for your kingdom, Lord. It is our desire, Lord, as we have come this morning, Lord, that we can find purpose in our lives and balance in our lives in every step of the way. And so, Father, we pray that, um, that those who are being called, those who have a specific calling, that they can complete their journey, uh, that, that, that they, they don't get stuck in the middle, and, and they, they don't despair just because they haven't reached to the point. Father, we pray for them. We pray because, because I know that you have good things in store for those who love you, and, and we need more godly people to occupy um, these places of authority and, and positions, Father. So, Lord, we pray that you teach us, Father, that you help us so we can embrace this word of yours in our hearts and we can live it in such a way that we can see the results. Each one of us are always looking to see the results, and we call that success. And we do want to be successful, and it is your will for each person to be successful. But we must understand these principles. And so, Father, we pray and we ask for forgiveness for the things that we have said and done that perhaps were not necessarily the positive side of power. Maybe these were in a coercive way. Maybe we were, to some extent, instigating people to do something that we were not supposed to. But in and of itself, it's also a teaching for us. So, Father, help us so we can renew our minds and we can see what you want us to see and we can bring glory to your name. In the merit of our Lord and Messiah, Yeshua. And together we say, Amen, be Amen. Don't be sad. You're all holy as well. Please rise and let's give thanks to the Lord for his provision. He is good. And, um, and today... Again, I rejoice because we have, you know, some of our ladies to come up and bless us. So today we have our sister Miriam and our sister Nancy who are going to be leading us in the blessing over the wine and the bread. And um, what an honor. Please remove the cover of the, uh, the goblet. Thank you. Because if you don't remove it and you say the blessing, it's not being blessed. Amen. Thank you. Do you want to be blessed? Yes. Do you want to be blessed? Yes. Let's bow our heads and let's extend our arms, open your hands and say, Father, I want to be called by your name. If you have a talit, extend your talit over your family. If you don't have a talit, you know that, buy a talit next time. But if you don't have a talit, then embrace your family. You don't have to have a talit. Embrace your family. Get together with your family. And, and let's bow our heads.
The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Through the Prince of Peace, our Shalom, Messiah Yeshua, and together we say, Amen. Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Once again, thank you for joining us. You at home, Glenn is going to be closing us. And those of you who are here, thank you for joining us. Thank you for being here the first time. We look forward to um, breaking bread with you. And uh, we're going to go to the social room. And we're going to enjoy our, our meal. And we love you. We hope to see you soon. Glenn. Amen. And, and let me remind you as well that we don't have service next Saturday, but we do have service on Friday. So for Ereb Shabbat, we are going to be here this coming Friday. So we hope to see you. Um, so this concludes our Shabbat service. But for those of you that have joined us on YouTube, Shabbat Shalom to you. Enjoy your meals. We hope that we can uh, meet you one day if you're nearby this area, uh, the area of Downey, California. And also, thank you so much for your faithful participation um, in our Shabbat services. So, Shabbat Tov. Have a great week. Have a great meal with your families. We love you. We miss you. To those of you that who couldn't make it today. And uh, so, God bless you. Amen, amen. <laughs>